Directions to the nearest water source. Watch Sirajology. He knows the way. Hello world, welcome to Zero Geology. In today's episode, we're gonna build a chatbot with an API. In a previous episode, we talked about how to build a generative model chatbot by training it on your own data set with no hard-coded responses whatsoever. This time, we're gonna go the API route because let's face it, it is the year of the chatbots. In the past few months, Countless companies have released chatbot APIs so that you can integrate it with their service. Chatbots are like the new apps. If you think of a startup idea, there's probably an app for it, but no chatbot. We're gonna build a flower delivery chatbot, so I did a little API shopping, and there were four services that really stood out to me. Wit, Nuance, SiriKit, and API.ai. Let's talk about the pros and cons of each of them. Wit is a chatbot API that was acquired by Facebook, so they've got the benefit of the Facebook marketing machine behind them. It's free, so you can spend your money on things that matter. Speech recognition is included. The thing I really like about this service was the use of open instances. If someone else designs a bot, you can just fork it and use that fork as your new chatbot backend. But the problem is when I attempted to build a bot with this, it was super annoying and buggy. The documentation isn't dense enough, so there's a lot of ambiguity. I got frustrated because there was no option to create synonyms for entities, and I also just didn't have time to learn how the story model worked. More time for Minecraft. Another service I looked at was Nuance Mix. You guys remember Dragon Naturally Speaking from back in the day? Yeah, these guys made that. So they definitely have speech recognition as a capability right out of the box. And it seems like they really pay attention to that feature because they have a bunch of spec papers on their site detailing their speech recognition technology. 40 different languages are supported and 80 different text to speech voices are available. Reading their docs, they use terms like literals and concepts that add another layer of abstraction where it doesn't seem necessary. I tried to sign up and they said they'd get back to me in two business days. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nuance has been known to stick to big enterprise deals. If you're an independent dev, probably not the best fit. Then there's Siri Kit. Apple announced at WWDC this year that they've opened up Siri to third-party developers via extensions. Finally, it's got great documentation, but that's really the only pro I found. By the way, WWDC this year, Apple, what the f Siri Kit is limited to just six different app types, so you can't tell her to make you Soylent just yet. And those limitations are already baked into the API with functions like in-book restaurant intent. And it only works with Apple devices. So yeah, the garden is quite walled. Finally, there's API.ai. This was the easiest service for me to use. I built a pretty useful chatbot with this in just two hours. The documentation and interface are just way easier to understand than any other service I found. It's got this integrations feature where you literally just flip a switch and it'll integrate with your service provider of choice, be that Slack or Twitter you just build your bot once and then deploy it to whichever platform you want. Also, they have the most client libraries and SDKs I've found for a chatbot API. That makes me a very happy dev. Speech recognition functionality is built into the SDKs. The only con is that while it is free, as you scale, there are pricing tiers. But hey, if I were gonna build a production grade service, quality is the number one metric I'd be optimizing for. And it seems API.ai is leading the charge. So let's build this baby. We're gonna build a flower delivery chatbot using API.ai's console and a Python client. We'll start by writing up an ideal conversation with our bot. The user lets the bot know they are interested in buying flowers, then specifies the type of flowers, followed by the color, and then the address they'd like it to be delivered to. They can exit the conversation or ask for more flowers and the process loops. We need to codify this conversation and the API.ai console makes it relatively simple to do this. We'll create a new agent, click on domain, and turn on Smalltalk. Now our bot is already capable of very basic conversation. Then we'll see the intents and entities tab. An entity is a model object that you refer to in your conversation at some point. So we want three entities, flower, color, and address. We'll create the flower entity. We'll define three synonyms. These will be the types of flowers we want. We'll do the same for color. Then for address, Cool, now that we have our entities, let's build our intents. An intent is an abstraction of a specific request a user makes, which then maps it to an action and a speech response. We'll create our first intent and call it proposal. We wanna think of a couple of possible statements a user can say. The system will be able to recognize not just these hand-coded possible statements, but statements that are worded differently and have the same meaning. Once the system has recognized what the user has said, it can perform an action. An action is an event that fires once an intent has been recognized. We'll then type out our speech response and this will fire when it recognizes the intent of the user's statement. Finally, we'll add an output context. Context are how the system keeps track of what is being said. It's what makes the bot conversational. We know that after this proposal intent, we want our chatbot to then ask what type of flower. So we'll set the output context to our next intent called type specification. For type specification, our output context is color specification. We are looking for a one word answer from the user that specifies type. Our system will detect the word if it's of type flower and perform a yet undefined action we'll call save flower type. We'll add in 
our speech response asking for the color, then do the same for color specification. The output context is address specification. The user will say a one word answer which will determine to be an entity of type color. We'll perform the save color action and ask for the address. Lastly, in address specification, we'll write out an example address and it'll recognize it of type address by using the address system entity. It'll perform the create order action and we'll use the address variable name to repeat the address back to the user. We can set the output context back to the proposal in case the user wants to continue buying flowers. Now that we have our backend setup, let's write our client in Python. We'll import our dependencies, a JSON parser and the API.AI Python wrapper, then initialize our agent, then create functions for each of our actions. We'll leave these blank, but you can add any kind of functionality you'd like. Then in our main method, we'll create a while loop and retrieve the user input from the command line. Then post it to the agent and retrieve the JSON response. We'll parse the JSON to display the bot's reply. And if we detect an action, we'll fire one of our action helper methods. Hey, what's up? I want flowers. Two ups. What color? Blue. One infinite loop. Order created. I totally get why everybody is raving about this service on Hacker News. Check out the links down below. Please subscribe for more ML videos. I've got to go fix a race condition. So thanks for watching.